Hey, what it do, y'all? It's your boy E2 Blue coming back at you again. And um, stuck in traffic trying to get back to my vehicle so I can get off of work. Um, a couple of items I want to um, get into. I want to delve into a little bit. Um, it's it's hum day. It's midweek already. Um, we got two more days of the week to the weekend. Um, excited for the weekend. I think... Uh, it's Mother's Day weekend, so, you know, all of you guys that, you know, still have your moms around and, and, and things of that nature, enjoy your mom this weekend and, you know, do something good for your parents this weekend. Um, also, too, um, I think supposed to be doing something with Mark this weekend. Um, look out for some videos for that, maybe Saturday. We'll see what happens. Um, I just want to talk about uh, a couple of things. Now, first, I will say... Those of you that don't know yet, Rod Smith has signed with the enemy, signed with the NFC East rival, the New York Giants. Now, I kind of saw that coming because the Cowboys didn't resign him. Like, he was kind of just sitting there in limbo mode. His contract was up. Some people actually didn't think that he, some people thought he was still on the roster, but I kept trying to explain to people, like, you know, when your contract is up, those of you that don't know, I'm sorry, I, I think I'm coming down with a cold, y'all. I apologize. Um, when your contract is up, that's it. Like, you know, if the team doesn't um, sign you back, you're a free agent, and you're free to go wherever you want to. Now, he did um, do a workout with the Bengals. Apparently, that didn't go too well because um, the Giants ultimately signed him. Now, it's an interesting thing that they got going on with the Giants. Like, Gettleman's been doing a lot of weird things, getting rid of Odell, signing signing uh, Shepherds, all that money and I just look at some of the things that they were doing and I, I'm like um, I don't understand it but again I'm not a Giants fan so that's not my worry but what I will say is um, they definitely got some running backs up there now you look at um, their starter Saquon Barkley um, guys similar to Zeke Elliott in the way that they play um, strong upper and lower body especially lower body those, both of those guys are you know track guys and they've done you know, a lot of different things in their early life to, you know, strengthen their legs and things of that nature. And, um, you know, you got two powerhouses at the running back position um, in, in our division with the Giants and, 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 um, and the Cowboys with Ezekiel Elliott and Saquon Barkley. Now, when you look at your backups, your backups are really important. Now, now they have uh, Wayne Gallman up there still. Uh, they got Paul Perkins, and now they just added Rod Smith. Now, a lot of people didn't understand the value of Rod Smith. Let's not forget what he's done with the Cowboys. Remember the game in 2017 when we played, um, he had that little short pitch pass. Uh, Dak Prescott had that short pitch pass to uh, Rod, Rod Smith for an 87-yard reception touchdown. And I think in that game, he torched the, the, um, the Giants. He scored two touchdowns that game and ran in for a second one. But I always was high on Rod Smith. I really liked him. I was hoping that the Cowboys would have re-signed him. I know Tamira Parker thinks the same way. Shout out to Tamira Parker, the homie. Uh, but yeah, I just, I just look at, I just look at that situation. I'm like, you could have, the Cowboys could have really used him. I know we got Tony Pollard now, and we got the Weber kid, kid. But I just look at Rod Smith and kind of the things he brought to the table. He remind me of. Uh, um, and I hate to talk about Joseph Randall because, you know, his life is not good right now with him getting arrested and all types of things that happened to him. But he was a good football player and he was a good backup for us. And I believe Rod Smith was too. And I kind of like the fact that him and his brother was both on the team, you know, having that camaraderie. Like, it's just, it was just a, a fun thing to having them both on the team. But, you know, now he's going with the enemy and he's going to be up in there in New York. I'm curious to see how the Giants utilize him as a backup. Um, what his role is going to be. You know, he is also a special teams guy. We're actually, you know, with the Cowboys, we're losing a really good uh, core special teamer, but maybe uh, Tony Pollard could take that spot from him on special teams, but we'll see. But I look at it like this. You know, teams see the talent that we don't re-sign on this team, and they pick them up. And these guys actually do stuff. Look at, look at Anthony Hitchens. Look at how well he was doing with the Chiefs. Now, I know he had got injured, but I had him in fantasy, and that guy had at least 15 tackles a game. So, <laughs> it almost seemed like. But, um, but yeah, like, you know, with, with Rod Smith, I mean, he brought a lot to the table. 
you know, he was that change the pace guy. You could use him on special teams. Um, it, you know, Linehan just didn't like this last season. Linehan, Linehan hurt a lot of guys. Uh, money and careers <laughs> with the Dallas Cowboys last year. Because you look at some of the guys that we lost and you look at some of the things we could have done with these people, even Jermaine's all the wallet. And I think that with Kellen Moore now, you look at a guy like that and I think he's going to dominate much more um, with Kellen Moore doing things and actually listening to his guys and, you know, doing different things and actually, you know, coming with a different approach and not being so damn bland. And, you know, the Sandman always says vanilla hand, and that, that's, that's what we had last year. And, um, you know, I'm happy for Rod Smith. He's going to make some more money, go to another team. But, God, a rival, though, now we gotta, now we got to play against you. It's going to be it's gonna be interesting. I wonder what Jalen feels about uh, playing against his brother. I bet he's probably excited about that because, you know, they did go to different colleges. You know, Rod went to Ohio State with Zeke Elliott and um, Jalen with the Notre Dame. But, you look at you look at that situation, and I mean, like I said, I'm happy for him. I just wish the Cowboys would have would have resigned him. I really like Rod Smith, but um, we'll see. It's gonna be an interesting season. I tell you that we got a we got a hard schedule. But I was looking at the schedule, and I and I look and I look at the schedule, and I think we could win at least 11 games this this season. And I think that we definitely could go to the playoffs. Because if we don't, guess what? Jason Garrett gone, y'all. Him gone. So. I just look at that situation and, um, you know, we'll just see, we'll just see about it when it comes around. Now, another thing I wanted to get to, and a lot of people are not talking about this right now. And you know, you guys, you know me, like I'm, I'm big on helping people and I'm big on the positivity. Now I bet you TMZ ain't going to talk about this. I know it was on NFL, um, the NFL network, um, CBS, uh, sports talked about it a little bit. But um, this story behind Ezekiel Elliott paying for a young football player's funeral. Now, it's a very sad story, guys. So if you don't know about the story, oh, excuse me, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm a little sick, you guys. Um, Jalen McKenzie, young eighth grader from the St. Louis area, um, played multiple positions for his middle school, um, receiver, running back, and uh, DB. And this guy looked up to Ezekiel Elliott and he wanted to be like him. Like, he looked at what Ezekiel Elliott does when he plays. Every time Ezekiel Elliott plays, he diagnoses it, he watches what he does, and he tries to perfect what he does. This is an eighth grader we're talking about. Now, his life was cut short last week. Um, he went to a party out in um, Venice, Illinois, which those of you that are from the Midwest like me, you kind of know that area. It's that That's the side of town that's very close to Missouri. Um, it's more closer to Missouri than it is um, Michigan. So it's on the opposite side. So um, I just look at um, that situation. I'm like, you know, he, you, you go to a party and you get hit by a straight bullet. Bullet wasn't for you. You know, you were just there leaving and you just get shot. Now, there was another, there was a girl that got hit too. She's in critical condition. She was a 15 year old. Um, but this is an eighth grade young boy that, um, was rated on in Sports Illustrated as one one of six future stars. Now he was definitely going to be a kid if he would have kept going. He'd have definitely been in the NFL. Um, well, we can't say definitely, but I would say that he was a phenom. He was definitely um, something that scouts were going to be looking at and probably go to a great college and 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 potentially go to the NFL. And he was a, he was a great football player. And um, Ezekiel Elliott saw this story and he reached out to. Um, Jalen McKenzie's mom and call, got a hold of her and he's paying for the whole funeral and I can't do nothing but give him a I'm driving right now, I can't clap but um, I just look at that and I, I, I commend Zeke Elliott for that everybody talks about Zeke Elliott's um, contract and how he's this, feeling this way and feeling that way, look Zeke don't feel no way, first of all Zeke's still making his money, He's he was a fourth he was a Fourth pick in the first round in 2016. He's making money. So, I mean, you know, he's, kind of, he's, he's making way more than Dak is. I think it's like $6 million or something like that. But, again, the Cowboys picked up his fifth-year option. And I'm pretty sure that if they don't get him signed in this offseason, they'll do it next season. No problem. We already know that he's going to get girly money because that's that's the area 
in which his talent makes sense to. So I look at it like that. So I don't know why these these talking heads are saying crazy stuff. Is Ezekiel Elliott not going to be on the team anymore? Now that they got Tony Pollard and Weber, is are they going to get him out? No, I don't want to hear all that. Like it's a bunch of crap. But Ezekiel Elliott is very much a part of this off offense. He is still eating. He is still the centerpiece. Um, the Joneses love him, and they say it all the time that he is important to this team. So regardless of the situation, that's what it is. And I got to commend Zeke Elliott for doing that, for reaching out and paying for that boy's funeral. Because, I mean, it's a really it's a sad story. It's like, you know, the people that you see that are doing thing, good things in life seems to always die young. And it's like the, the people that are out here doing bad seem to live forever. It's crazy. But nonetheless, um, those of you that live in a DMV like me in um, the D.C., Maryland, Virginia area, um, you know that if you watch the Russ Parr show, you know that Russ Parr's radio show, he, he did a little rant um, a couple of days ago about um, Jalen McKenzie and how he died and how things have to change. And I agree. Um, we can't keep killing each other out here. We can't, you know, you go out here and you just, you don't understand what that does. You go out here and you just you decide you want to premeditate it, use a gun, go and try to kill somebody. You miss. You hit somebody else that it's not intended for. First of all, you shouldn't be shooting the other person anyway. You shouldn't be killing people regardless. Um, unless it's self-defense. That's different. But I look at it like this. You, I just I just look at the situation and, and Russ Parr was right when in his rant. Like Things have got to change in this world. I, I mean, I don't know where the hate is coming from. I don't understand why so many people out here are just... just loving the hate and just you know you look at somebody i don't like this individual so i'm gonna kill him and i'm just like it, it it's never that i remember back in the day me growing up I, I grew up in the era where um we would fight each other like with fists like if we had an issue with somebody we would fist fight you get your ass whooped <laughs> you you go go back the next day y'all best friends again or not necessarily the best friends but y'all cool again you know you got me good now now it's like you get into a conversation with somebody somebody wants to the first thing they do is grab a gun and kill them and i'm like i don't know when this started but th we got to do something about this we got to get some of these guns off the street we got to figure out something whatever the case may be but you can't even have fun anymore you can't even go to an innocent party without you know people doing crazy stuff but you know, unfortunately, that's the world we live in today. And, you know, me personally, I can't change it, but I'm going to speak on it because, again, you know, I'm an advocate for positivity. I'm an advocate for what's right. And I want to see things done the right way. And, you know, it's the world we live in. And, you know, as far as, you know, me growing up and, and, and my kid, I'm definitely my kid is definitely going to understand you know what this world is about and and you know just like with everybody else it's, it's, it's all about parenting you got to teach your kids the right way and you got to you know and everything but nonetheless um that's pretty much all i have for right now i'm um, just just a really sad story um you know prayers out to uh jayla mckenzie's family and his mom i know she's grieving but ezekiel elliott doing a good thing by um paying for the boy's funeral and i can't do nothing but commend them for that but thanks again guys all my subscribers i appreciate you guys if this is your first time hearing about me or seeing my videos go ahead uh smack that subscribe button you know like share comment it's your boy e2 blue always keeping it real y'all have a great hump day